Hello students, in this video we'll consider the second fundamental form of a surface. Let's just assume we're in Euclidean space. So in Euclidean space, we have a surface parameterized by a function r of u and v. And from this parameterization, construct the unit normal vector of the surface. That's going to be n hat, and n hat is going to be ru cross rv over the length of ru cross rv, like that. Perfect. And now we can do is a poly. I mean, consider a new family of surfaces. Consider the one parameter family rho of u and v and t given by r of u and v in this, or plus a plus actually, plus, because it plus or minus, yeah, it's not here, but plus, it's R of U, minus T and hat of U and V, right? So I'm doing is I am looking at a family of surfaces that are basically just shifts of the surface along the normal direction, right? So move the surface along the normal vector, like that. As we have a family of surfaces like that, that's what we're just thinking if we have a surface like this, for example, Every panic service and the general worker. And then I'll get another curve over here like that. So we just will be the space of all these different surfaces, right? So it's like rho of u, v, and t. And this over here would be r of u and v. So it's a parallel point of these normal translation of all these surfaces, right? And so now, because I'm going to find the first fundamental form of this uh, row here, right? So let's do that. So, compute is the first fundamental form of row. These row surfaces, U, V, T. Okay. So, what's row U going to be? So, row sub U is going to be R sub U minus t, then n hat u, and then rho v is going to be r v minus t n hat v, like that, okay? And so now what's the first fundamental form? So what we have over here, so we'll have ds squared is going to be what? It's going to be rho u dot rho u. So if I do rho u dot rho u, what are we going to have? We're going to have a whole bunch of terms over here. We'll have an r u dot r u. We'll have minus 2 t r u dot n u. And then we'll have plus t squared n u dot n u. Those are my d u squared terms. Then we'll have some d, then the next terms over here are going to be twice the dot product of these things. So I'll have a r u dot r v. I'll have a minus t minus t n u n u dot r v then minus t n v dot r u like that and then the final cross terms of a minus plus t squared and then we'll have an n u dot n v n u dot n v those are d u d v terms and then finally over here we'll have what kind of terms we'll have terms that are just the rho v dot rho v terms so we'll have a r v dot r v then we'll have a minus 2 rv dot nv, like that, with a t. And then, then what? And then we'll have finally a t squared, nv, n hat v dot n hat v, dv squared, right? And so this is the metric tensor for these shifted surfaces, right? I want to figure out a measure of curvature be how much these first fundamental forms, how much the arc lengths are changing as I do the derivative with respect to t, right? So I'm going to do that. So now consider 
this ds squared is really a function of what? Is really a function of t, right? So now I'm going to define the second fundamental form two, just to be one half d by dt of ds squared of t evaluated at t equals zero, right? And this thing over here is my second fundamental form, second fundamental form. The second fundamental form is how much the first fundamental form of this parameterized, this parameterized family of surfaces is changing as you, as you translate these surfaces in the normal direction at each point, okay? And so now, of course, we can do this calculation. Now, the calculator might say, well, this is going to be a complete mess to do a t-derivative and plug in zero. But I just need to look at the first order terms over here. Like the constant terms, are, these terms over here are going to vanish, right? And all those terms vanish. And then the only terms we're going to get, the one half is basically just counteract this two over here and the fact that there are two of these things over here. So what we'll get from this calculation, if we just think carefully, is going to be what? Is going to be um, these things over here. So it's going to be a, every term is going to have a negative, right? So it's going to be negative r u dot n hat u, n u hat like that. Those are going to be my du squared terms, du squared, plus, plus what? I'll have an n u and u hat dot rv plus ru dot nv. Those are my du dv squared. And then finally what? And finally an r, well the, these terms over here I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have an rv dot nv, rv dot nv, the partial derivatives, dv squared. And that is my second fundamental form, right? And so now, of course, I can use a, this nice relationship over here. We know that ru dot n is equal to zero, right? So we know so what can I say? So since r u dot n is equal to zero and r v dot n is equal to zero, what can we do? I can differentiate this with respect to u. If I differentiate this with respect to u, I'll get r u u dot n hat plus r u dot n u is equal to zero. And this over here will tell me that r v v dot n hat plus r v dot n v is equal to zero. And I can do a cross root of these things over here. I can do r v u, r v, if I do a u derivative of this, r v u dot n hat uh, plus, of course, r v dot n, uh, n u, n hat u is equal to zero. And then similarly, similarly what? And, and r u v dot n hat plus r u dot n hat n hat v is equal to zero. In other words, what can we do? I can replace r u dot n v with the negative of r, with the negative of r u v dot n. I can replace r v u I can replace R V N U with negative of R V U N. And these two, th these two terms over here are identical to each other, right? So this term over here, thankfully, this term over here is equal to this term over here by the commutative of the mixed partial derivatives. What that allows me to do is the following. That allows me to write the second fundamental form. The second fundamental form 2 is really going to be what? It's going to be R U U dot N hat D U squared plus. Now, both those things are the same, right? So I'm going to write it 2. And then we can write this as what? As r u v dot n hat d u d v plus what? Plus r v v dot n hat d v squared like this. Okay, excellent. And oftentimes in text, you're going to see this written in the following areas. It's as l u d u squared plus 2 m d u d v. And then what? And then plus n dv squared. And this is our second fundamental form of a surface, second fundamental form. Of the surface. And the second fundamental form of the surface is going to allow me to compute curvatures, right? The Gaussian curvature, the sectional curvatures, the mean curvature, and a whole bunch of different curvatures because what we're really, at, what we're really doing by this perturbation over here is we're really basically figuring out how much the normal vector is changing, right? And how much the normal vector changes is a measure of curvature. We're going to see that in terms of like what the Gauss map is and the, uh, the Weingarten map in terms of figuring out how the normal vector is using it as a barometer for the measures of change. And that should be a surprise to us, right? Because we know that the rate of change of the normal vector 
vector from curve theory, if I do the derivative of the normal vector, it encapsulates both curvature and torsion if I dot them in with certain things, right? If I dot, for example, the unit tangent, the derivative of the principal normal vector with the unit tangent vector, that gives me the negative of the curvature, right? So we're using our, our we're using our ideas from curve theory to basically sort of take this up one more dimension to figure out what notions of curvature are for surfaces. Thank you very much.